Hey you guys, this is Kasi with Let's Do Network and in this video we are going to talk about call filtering and Cisco Unified Communication. It's kind of analogous to how access control list works in the world of IP where we can define certain kind of uh, permit and deny statements to match certain kind of traffic and once it matches the rule, let's say if it is being permitted in access list, it's going to be allowed and if it's being denied in access list, it's going to be blocked and those traffic would be dropped. Likewise, in UC call filtering, we are going to define certain kind of rules or patterns that's going to match a certain kind of uh, identification like ANA or DNIS of the call and then it can be either allowed or blocked or it can be redirected to some of the external application like Unity Connection or Unified CCX. So let's talk about a small scenario here where you and I are working as an administrator for a customer network. Let's say that the user reports that he or she is getting a lot of malicious call and basically he or she want us to block those calls so that the user will be happy, right? So what we can do about it? So we can uh, configure uh, certain kind of rules or patterns in either voice gateways or in UCM to block those calls. So how we can do it? Let's say um, that the anonymous user out on the PSTN is making a lot of um, malicious calls to this end user who is who is here. So the end user basically want us to block those calls so that this phone receive, doesn't receive those calls from this caller. So what we can use, what we can do is we can basically um, find the ANA or the caller ID of this malicious calls and we can define certain kind of rules either on this voice gateway or the UCM to match those ANI and once it matches the ANI it can be either blocked or even it can be redirected to some of the external applications like Unity or or even Unified CCX. It depends on what we want to do with the call but we have a lot of capabilities to perform on that. So in in the next few set of slides, we are going to discuss about what are the different methods to, to filter these calls and where we can exactly apply those filters. The first and foremost method is using translation profiles in Cisco IOS voice gateway. Uh, this is pretty old method and this works like a charm. What, it, what does it do is basically we can create the translation rules and profiles like how we create in voice gate for, for digit manipulation. Likewise, we create the same rules and translation profile and we match the ANA. Let's say if a call comes to the voice gateway, we create a rules to match the ANA of the call and once it matches the once it matches the ANA, it's going to be blocked as soon as it's being received on the gateway. So how does it work is basically we create the dial peers and apply those translation profile, let's say the translation profile name is block. We are going to apply this on the inbound dial pair. So as soon as the calls comes in, it's going to look up this translation profile. If, if let's say the ANA is 1, 2, 3, 4 and if it matches the rule that we define here, that call would be blocked, right? So, so this is one of the method we can use to filter out the calls in the Cisco IOS voice gateway. But the thing is like it only works with a SIP and HST23 because what we are doing is we are going to apply this rule on the dial pair. In case of MGCP, it's not going to use the dial peers, right? Because let's say we have a PRA connection from your, from our provider, and if any calls that's being sent to this voice gateway, 
So we are going to receive the Q931 information from the provider, right? So what does the voice gateway do is, it's basically back all those Q931 signaling to the CUCM. So we don't have the capability to look at those signaling and do the digit manipulation or filtering the calls out in the gateway. So that, that's the reason I said it's only possible with SIP and HAS323. And also there is one more limitation as this method uses the translation rule set let's say the rule set is 1, we can define a maximum of rule 1 to 15, right? So that means we cannot have more than 15 rules inside the rule set that is being called in the translation profile. So we, we, we are only limited to 15 rules. So let's say that we are matching based on ANI for different areas. So we have the capability to match um, probably 15 ANIS, or if we use a range of ANA, maybe we would be able to match more. But at certain point of time, we would be able to match only few ANIs. That's one of the limitations with this method. So as I said, this is the first method, which, is, which uses the Cisco IOS voice gateway translation rules and profiles. So in the next method uses the unified CM to do the call filtering. So from unified 8.0 and above, there is a field call route to the next hub by calling party number. That's available in translation pattern. If you go ahead and look at the translation pattern, There should be a field with a checkbox. We can enable this checkbox. So what does normally the translation pattern do is, let's say this is a translation pattern and we have defined some pattern, let's say exclamation. It's going to match any number. So it, what does it matches is, it's going to match the D, N, I, S of the call, which is the dialed number, sorry, which is going to match the DNIS, which is the dial number of the call. Let's say the dialed number is 3001. Let's say the ANI is 1, 2, 3, 4 for an example. So what is this translation pattern going to match? Is It's going to match the 3001. That's a normal behavior of translation pattern. Once we do a check mark, and once the digit analysis engine process this call, it's going to send the call to the next hub. So what we can do is we can play with the CSS and partitions so that it can be routed to the another translation pattern. Let's say it's one, two, three, four. So what does it do is, as we check this checkbox for route next hub based on the calling party number, this initial translation pattern is look up the DNIS and route to the next hub. But once it reaches the next hub, the digit analysis engine is informed to look at the calling party number. And as we define 1, 2, 3, 4, which matches the ANA of the call. So what we can do is, you all know that we have options to either allow or block certain certain calls, uh, nothing but route or block the call. If you want, we can block the call if it's a malicious call or if, if, it's, if it's some kind of call that need to be directed to some other number, we can direct the call and also we can do the digit manipulation so that it can be sent to some different destination. Right. This is this this works well with um, SIP, MGCP, and H323. But there is a limitation when it comes to SIP, and that can be um, fixed by uh, having a SIP normalization script 
that can be configured under SIP inbound SIP trunk and we are going to discuss about that in the next slide. So we have discussed about the second method which is going to use a field called route to call to the next stop based on the calling party number. So it matches the, it matches the ANA of the call and then it can be either blocked or louder and we can do some digit manipulation for the call. This is not another method but what we are going to do is we are still going to use the second method but let's say we have uh, IDSP to the service sorry we have a SIP trunk to the to our IDSP and when malicious calls comes to your gateway there there may be certain call that receives the ANA as a non numerical string some of the examples like restricted or anonymous or it can be any kind of non numerical strings so when when we send the call out to the unified CM the unified CM digit analysis engine doesn't have the capability to process those non numerical strings before version 9.0 so what does it do is it's going to simply drop those calls. So that's the whole reason we are going to use the SIP normalization script. So what does it do is using the script we are going to convert these non-numerical strings into some numerical value. Let's say if we, if we see restricted or anonymous or unknown we are going to convert those into some numerical number like 1, 2, 3, 4. So, and then what we are going to do is we are going to send this call to the translation pattern by playing with CSS and partitions. And then what does it normally we normally the uh, translation pattern matches the DNIS of the call, let's say exclamation, it can be any DNIS. And once it's go through the translation pattern we can have this we can have the checkbox to route the call to the next stop based on the calling party number so once it reaches sorry once it reaches the next translation pattern what does it do is we'll define 1 2 3 4 so that it matches this ani of the call and then what we can do is we can either route or block the call. It depends on what we want to do with the call. It depends on what kind of call we are receiving. So with the SIP normalization script, what we are doing is we are converting those non-numerical strings as the CUC wouldn't be able to process those non-numerical strings. We are converting those non-numerical strings into a numerical value and then we are going to match it with the translation pattern and asking it to do the digit sorry, digit analysis based on the ANI and if it matches a certain ANI that, uh, that we defined here uh, it, it would be either blocked or routed to the next hop right so from UCM 9.0 it has the capability to do the digit analysis based on the URI uh, but the issue is we have to use the translation patterns to match a certain um, identification number like DNIS or ANI but if you look at the translation pattern as an administrator if we don't have an option to create a translation pattern for non-numerical numbers like uh, restricted so it's not possible. It's only allow us to configure some numerical values. Okay? Like 1, 2, 3, 4 or any combination of digits. So it doesn't allow us to configure a non-numerical string. So it, regardless of the version, we still have to use 
the normalization script to convert those non-numerical strings into a numerical string and then we can match it with the translation pattern for our call filtering. So these are uh, the methods that we can utilize in the unified communication environment to do the call filtering. Let's go ahead and review this. So the first method that we discussed is using iOS Gateway, which uses the translation profiles, which blocks the call as, as soon as it's being received by the gateway. The second method that we discussed is using CUCM, which is going to use the field called a route to the next hop based on the ANI. That way we can match the ANI and block those calls. And the third method we discussed is using SIP normalization script, uh, which is developed by a Cisco engineer. This, what this script basically do is, this script basically converts those non-numerical strings into a numerical value so that you can convert those non-numerical string and then you can match it with the translation pattern. So these are the three methods that we can utilize in unified communication to do the call filtering. I hope you all clear about the concepts of call filtering and unified communication. In the next few set of videos, I'll be uh, demonstrating about the call filtering in a, in a lab server. With that said, uh, and if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and also you can comment below and you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll uh, see you on next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.